Good morning. What what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in <laughs> into another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing today? Yay, good. Good to see you guys. Hi. Hi. Man, so I'm, I, I think I'm going to start off our, our Chief Chat a little bit different. Uh, I'm feeling a little froggy. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna oh, tell a joke. Oh gosh, I'm gonna no. tell a joke. Oh. I got a, I got a oh, million of them. Jokes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I eat a whole bunch of Laffy Taffy, so I just, I got a bunch of material. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so blind man, blind man walks into a bar, then a table, then a chair, <laughs> then other oh, people. Oh, chief. What's your name? I. I, uh, oh yeah, well, listen. <laughs> Don't tell jokes to a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> listen, uh, good I, job, hero. Way to I, take I, my thunder <laughs> away. <laughs> How many Laffy Taffy's did you have to go through through your kid's Halloween stash? Yeah. yeah Come over. No, thank I, you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, st I'm still going through it, but yeah, that, that was, that was, that was, my, that was um, me opening it up for our, our next guest. I'll uh, give you some <laughs> professional advice. Stick to Reese's Pieces. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Julie, do you mind introducing today's guest? So, Chief, we have a terrific guest with us today. He is the first ever stand-up comedian to sit down with Chief Chat, and he's performed at comedy shows around the country. He's appeared on NBC, CBS, and Fox. He also has a special appreciation for the military. He grew up in a military family that served those who serve, and he's here with us today to boost morale for the military community. Please give a big Chief Chat welcome to Alex Ansel. Hey. That's me, yeah. There you go. Heck yeah, thank you so much. I'm so uh, so honored uh, to be on the show. And uh, yeah, look at me. I got a good night's rest. I got up early, got my coffee right here with me and dressed up for you guys. <laughs> yes. And uh, excited to be part of this because, uh, you know, with, without the exchange, without APHIS, I wouldn't be here. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Alex, and a little housekeeping. You guys know, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your love with Alex there in the comments. And if you have any questions, we'll read those live. Um, now's a good time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, well, why not? You should. Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes Wednesday, like tomorrow. Um, so following us helps you know who's coming up next. Awesome, awesome. So, Alex, man, it's, it's yes, a sir. pleasure meeting you. Um, I, I take it that you you're probably not going to take me on the road, I, but I do have a thirty second set. <laughs> uh, just feel. Uh, hold on, I will take you on the road because uh, you know uh, you look like you can handle yourself. And you know, sometimes in some of these weird, scary places out in the middle of nowhere, I you know might say something that might get me in trouble. And, uh, you know, so I got I, you. Hey, I got you. Don't worry about it. Plus, you seem like a fun dude. So, you know, it's all about the hang. You know, a lot of times when comedians take other comedians on the road, it's not about like, oh, my God, are they so funny? Sometimes it's like, how many bags can they carry? Can the other yes. comedians sell my shirt? <laughs> can they, uh, <laughs> you know, can I hang out with them in a place for an extended period of time? And then we can work on getting funny. You know, okay, that's something we can work you, on. So, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I am trainable. So, uh, but, but we're, we're super excited to have you uh, with us today. Uh, yeah. You know, just having you on here to help boost morale for our military viewers. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us where you're joining us from today? I am in the den of sin known as Las Vegas, uh, no, uh, Nevada. I have to train myself because grew up in Texas. So it's, you know, we say no, uh, Nevada, but it's Nevada. They're Nevada. very particular about it. Very particular. <laughs> So yeah, I've been I'm here the last four years. I've uh, been saying it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I say it how you want to say it. it's a free country. You know, let them get upset. You know, and I, I say it right. I say it right like around two a.m. in, in, in Vegas. <laughs> but, you hey, know. when you're <laughs> when you're in Vegas losing money, they don't care. They're just yeah, like yeah. yeah. Okay, so. And I'm well, sure the only people that complained are displaced Californians that are in. Uh, Nevada. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Alex, you know, most people have heard of Army brats and Air Force brats, military brats, but you, you are an APHIS exchange brat. So what yeah. was it like growing up knowing that your family was all in serving the military? So tell us about, you know, where you grew up and how you grew up. 
All right. Uh, so uh, first 10 years of my life, I uh, grew up in Germany, you know, but uh, I was actually born uh, in Fort Worth near the, uh, where the APHIS headquarters used to be, you know, oh, or it still is or we're still there, been a while. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was actually born in Fort Worth. Uh, so I got the native Texan thing going for me. Like, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and then like two weeks later, uh, or right before, you know, uh, right before I was born, my dad got orders to go, you know, run a store in Germany. And, um, I want to say it was like Heidelberg or something. Uh, oh. but then I, you know, mostly remember growing up, uh, we, we lived off base, uh, mm -hmm. in a small town called Bonn near Kaiserslautern. And my dad was a manager at the exchange over in Ramstein. And, uh, my mother was a cashier either at Vogelway or at Ramstein as well. And then that's how they met. So both, both of my parents worked for oh, AP. That and, was an uh, APHIS love. Yeah. And then uh, they made this guy. So, <laughs> and the world hasn't been the same since. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty cool. Like uh, having that experience of, of, you know, growing up off base and, uh, you know, in a dual language household. You know, like I would speak German all day at school and then come home and, you know, speak English and then uh, still to be able to go on base. And, you know, so I was like, all my friends were German kids, but I had American Nintendo. I had, you know, Kool-Aid uh, drinks and, and, you know, we'd have peanut butter and all this stuff that was so foreign and weird to, to the German kids. Uh, we kind of introduced them to that, uh, you know, root beer, didn't care for it. Uh, but all my German friends, uh, you know, still loved uh, Kool-Aid and Nintendo. So sometimes they would come over and play it and my mom would make them Kool-Aid and stuff and I wouldn't even be home. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> sure, mom. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, wow. I heard that I heard Kool-Aid kind of been a, a pretty big inspiration in your life. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Kool-Aid is the, the, I see yeah, the my nickname. The <laughs> so it's a nickname I got in middle school uh, because uh, kids are cruel uh you know they could be monsters yeah. uh you know but uh the the jokes i do online are you know they call me kool-aid because i make the ladies go oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then Listen, i have some, I love some Kool -Aid and the Kool -Aid. <laughs> yeah i have some not so pg versions that you can hear you know elsewhere later <laughs> we'll look for those yeah. after dark yes sir. Well, and, and, and actually kool-aid doesn't have flavors they it's it's color so it's exactly kool -Aid. It's, yep. it's blue Kool-Aid. There's no, that, that, the color is the flavor of Kool-Aid. Exactly. So I'm very, very oh. familiar with that. So yeah, it's there not is one grape, it's though. purple? Uh, it's purple, purple. Kool-Aid, yes. My favorite though is Purple Source Rex. Yes. And uh, it was limited edition, but here's the pro tip. If you make a gallon, uh, you use uh, three of the purples and then one of the yellows. And then you get the grape with a little bit of that bite and the zing. So oh, hit me up for more recipes at Y2 Foolish. All right. <laughs> I'm learning so much today. That is great. I'll make that with my holiday dinner. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I like it. I I think, yeah, we got, uh, oh, wait, here we go. Y2 Kool-Aid is all my uh, social media stuff right there. So you can see it. Y2 Kool-Aid. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, Alex, uh, what sparked your passion for comedy? And then how'd you get started? I, I just always had, uh, you know, my, my dad, again, he was kind of a ham. Uh, he would, you know, I think he definitely probably pioneered dad jokes, of course. Uh, so, you know, I think just whenever, <laughs> whenever, you know, uh, your significant others, you know, you have, when you become a father, I think it just gets installed. Um, so uh -huh. my dad was always kind of funny. And then uh, I just always had a love and appreciation of, of, of funny movies and comedy and then it, it didn't hit me until later on, because as a child growing up, all my favorite actors were, you know, like Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, Eddie Murphy. Mm. And my dad kind of took me aside and goes, oh, they were all stand-up comedians. And, and you know, when you're 10 years old, 12 years old, you're like, what's stand-up? And then, oh, okay, kind of watch Jay Leno a little bit. And then, you know, when we, in 94, we moved to the States and, uh, you know, they had this thing called Cable. <laughs> uh, it, they had a whole uh you know a station dedicated to comedy uh comedy central and then yeah. i i mean cartoons didn't matter to me at that point i always left my tv on comedy central and it would just have you know stand up on there and you know i'd be doing homework and stand up would be on in the background and i just always had this love and appreciation for it and you know i <laughs> i was i was a fat kid growing up and uh, still am right 
and uh and, you know use my my humor as a defense mechanism for sure as well you know and i think that's kind of what led me into performing too because um i kind of you know i'd get looked at stared at whatever probably usually you know whatever classroom i was in i was the fattest kid but if i could disarm them with a joke or if they try to insult me and then i insult them right back and you know know that i ain't shook uh that would always you know kind of uh you know like lighten the mood and and uh kind of have more fun uh with that so and then you get attention so you know when you make people laugh uh you you know they <laughs> they like you and it's yeah plus uh my parents were older when they had me so uh my parents were both uh 40 when they had me i was a very uh late in life baby i guess you know mm -hmm. and uh you know none of my parents friends had kids my age and so the way i would get attention was was i would do jokes and stuff and sometimes not so appropriate ones <laughs> where my mom would glare at my dad and my dad would just like try not to laugh and i knew if i made my dad laugh he couldn't be mad at me you know um so i think all all that kind of like put together kind of and then plus you know in school and stuff uh you know in high school uh people would just tell me oh you're funny you should do stand-up comedy do stand-up comedy and I, I didn't even, you know, think to get up on stage until after I graduated college and did my my first open mic. And uh, and then it's been a wild ride ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. awesome. Well, it, <laughs> you, when you're telling your story about kids and being cruel. Uh, so I, I've had the same size head since I was like five and, and, and I've just finally kind of grew into it. And mm -hmm. so <laughs> I'm seriously, like so. I had all kind of nicknames and and, and yeah. jokes, but I had to kind of develop tough skin and learn how to. Yeah, we used to call it cracking, crack back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so uh, yeah, I, so <laughs> look at Kevin over there. You can't get a helmet. And they're like, yeah, yeah, up. yeah. Like yeah. I had my t-shirts were buttoned up, buttoned up t-shirts and all the stuff that you know. They just had a whole bunch of different things they they said. Yeah. So it was it was like I said. Uh, when you were telling that story, that kind of took me. Took yeah. Me there, but uh, so I know COVID nineteen has absolutely sucked the life out of the world. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I know it's hard, especially being a comedian. Yeah. The venues, uh, the venues closing down and during lockdown. So can you tell us what life is like now for you? Uh, first of all, fake news. It's no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm so health conscious. If you look at me, uh, no, it's, it's been terrible. You know, I, uh, late January, I was on stage making jokes about it. Uh, you know, one of the jokes I, I, I uh, would do is, uh, you know, if I saw an Asian tourist coughing, I'd, you know, kind of do a double take or something like that. And then it just kind of snowballed into, <clears throat> okay, it's a whole worldwide thing. And, you know, March hit and, you know, okay, comedy club is closed. Everybody's on lockdown. And it's just like, okay, I, and to be honest, those, you know, first two, three weeks, you know, I, I, I kind of liked it. I was like, okay. I could decompress. I'm not in this constant, like, you know, rat race. And, um, you know, I had some money saved up and I was like, I'll be okay for a little bit. Uh, and, but then after I get that itch, you know, as a performer, we need that, that feedback. We need to be on stage and, and get that approval. And, um, you know, and after a while, you don't, you don't get that. And then plus two, I'm, you know, I'm very gregarious and I love to hang out with people and, and, you know, uh, <laughs> cracking as the, mm -hmm. the chief put it and, you know, uh, bus chops. It took me a minute, uh, <laughs> you know, and hang out with all my comedy friends. Cause uh, to me, like one of the best things about doing comedy is hanging out with other comics mm -hmm. and, you know, cause it's just uh, mental gymnastics of like who can say the funniest thing and the next thing. And then, you know, we're, we're doing chess match, you know, all back and forth. So I really miss that. And then of course, like interacting with people and meeting people from all over the place. And, and Vegas is a great place to perform comedy because everybody come towards you, you know, they come to you. Um, <clears throat> whereas, you know, I spent a lot of my life and I still, you know, I still try to, and I will go back on the road again once all this is, uh, is done is uh, getting out there and meeting, uh, meeting people. So it, it's been tough and kind of had a transition and, find other ways of, of getting that attention of getting those eyeballs and then getting that kind of um, kind of scratching that itch of performing. So I've been making a lot of cashiers laugh. Uh, that's been, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so 
<clears throat> if somebody's giving uh, delivering the pizza, I'm like, I'm going to get a chuckle out of them. Watch this. Um, and then doing stuff like this on, um, on zoom, doing podcasts and working on some, some other projects and working on my social media and, and editing stuff. So kind of like, uh, sharpening all the other, all the other tools in my Swiss army knife. Cause you know, being a comedian, especially nowadays, you know, uh, you can't, <laughs> you know, 30 years ago, Oh, let me go on Carson. And now I can headline everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, today you have to know, you know, you got to make your own flyers. Like I do edit your own videos. You got to, you know, no marketing, uh, you know, all this other stuff other than just like, all right, go be funny. You know, it's way more than that nowadays. So I think that answered it, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I imagine you, you probably have a fan base or you have, and you mentioned that you'd like to interact with people. Mm -hmm. So how has our new normal affected how you interact with your fans or people who you would want to become fans? Right. I, uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, check me out on uh, Facebook at Alex Ansel, all caps. Uh, the dog wasn't a fan, but that's fine too. Uh, <laughs> Hazel. <laughs> Hazel knows that I'm a cat person. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, Hazel, I. Hazel, Hazel going ham. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> so my the thing I've kind of transitioned to now is is Twitch, uh, which is a streaming platform. So kind of like how the people are watching us right now streaming on Facebook, you can do this on Twitch. But on Twitch, I kind of uh, will do jokes and do some uh, comedy, you know, almost podcasting kind of things. And then I'll also play video games. I'll play video games with the people that are watching. And what it lets me do is like I can broadcast myself and then people can ask me questions and interact with me through the chat. And I it kind of it scratches that itch a little bit. I, I, I almost look at it as like if I'm performing in front of a sold out crowd in Vegas, that's eating, you know, medium rare, just juicy, just scrumptious steak. And then me doing Twitch is kind of like, all right, here's a Beyond Meat Whopper. It's good, <laughs> you know, eh, but it's it's not the same. But um, it, it's been holding me over, and I really like the kind of community I'm building over there. And the next thing I got to work on is explaining what Twitch is to you, because most of my fans are on Facebook. And, you know, Facebook has a, that older uh, demographic. What's up, boomers? I love y'all. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, hey, come watch me on Twitch and uh, interact with me on there. And I'll do things where I'm like playing a fighting game and then people can, they can send $20. And no matter what I'm doing in the game, I eat a raw jalapeno right then and there. Oh. And then people can watch me struggle like, Ugh! and then of course that leads to chaos and uh, hilarity ensues, if you will yes uh, <laughs> so, so what's yeah, your what's go. your twitch handle again what was it uh at y2 kool-aid yeah all at my social y2 media yeah is uh letter y number two k-o-o-l-a-i-d until craft sues me so <laughs> heck yeah <laughs> yeah Remember when, y2, remember when Y2K was going to be a thing? Yeah. Oh, oh my that's, gosh. That's why I named oh it. my gosh. Yeah. It's yeah. good. It was right, Everything. Right it was, the world was going to shut down. Everything was going to stop working. <laughs> and as somebody who uh, my dad would volunteer me to fix everybody's computers, uh, you know, because, oh, that's my son. He's good with computers. And I'm like, Dad, I only know how to rip off albums that, you know, from Napster. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> like, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tech genius hacker, apparently. <laughs> and, you know, when Y2K was coming around, I was like, I'm going to make so much money off these old people. And <laughs> <nothing."> <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, yeah. Alex, you know, we've been talking a lot about what's going on, and we are living in some serious times right now. So, mm -hmm. How do you, how do you find the bright side and stay resilient and also funny? I mean, you've kept us laughing for the wow. last 20 minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've always been like an optimistic person. I always uh, try to look at the, the lighter side of things and uh, you know, because, you know, sure. I mean, there, you know, there is that constant uh, or that the notion of the sad clown and, you know, that's not to say I don't, I don't have my dark moments as well, but you know, me being positive or, or, <clears throat> you know, making other people laugh, that makes me feel better. And then I don't have to feel like a sad sack or a clown or uh, like a sad clown. 
And I think one of the best compliments I ever got was from another comedian who was just like, Hey man, I just, I want to hang out with you. Cause uh, I've been bummed out and you know, you're just like good energy and all that. And I was like, huh, yes. what, a, what a kind thing to say. Thank you so much. And he's like, see, it's stuff like that, that, and I'm like, ah, you know, um, so, uh, you know, I just, I just always try to find the best in things and, 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 you know, sure. Like I said, I, I have my moments where it's just like, I'll say something or tweet something. People are like, Whoa, Alex, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm fine. You know, just what I can't do these other types of jokes, you know, but, um, I, you know, like I said, I always try to look the best of things. I, I have a bit where it's kind of exemplified. It's definitely inappropriate to talk about here. But if you look for it on YouTube, it's where uh, I actually performed for a room full of veterans on Veterans Day last year here in uh, Vegas. And I talk about how I'm such a, an optimist and how that worked out for me. So if you want to go click on uh, my YouTube for, for that. So <laughs> we will check that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's uh, to, to anybody that's enlisted. Uh, I think they'll appreciate it because it talks about, um, you know, fighting terrorism and then that, you know, and how I'm very thankful of that. And then, uh, you know, me trying to do my part. So I'm trying to like ice skate on thin ice with yes, of, uh, yes. not trying to a reveal too much. And then two, it is. Yeah. It's, it's not breakfast conversation to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, and, so, and that's one of the, the things I love about comedy is like, to me, like, you know, be funny is funny. And, you know, if you, if, you know, if you can make kids laugh, that's one of the hardest things. If you can make old people laugh, that's another one of the hardest things. And I've always been able to kind of like, just go around, go be a ham and crack people up. So, you know, yeah, do I have some more risque stuff? Of course. But then I can also, you know, do stuff like this and not even flinch or have somebody worry about the, the sensor button. <laughs> yeah. And our, our budget doesn't uh, allow us to have someone with a sensor button. So it's just... <laughs> uh, all you get is panicked looks from the producers. Yeah, just like, like, oh, uh, you get uh, yeah, 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 exactly. So um, <laughs> it looks like, hey, Julie and uh, Leah, it looks like we're gonna have to do like a spinoff to Chief Chat to have a Chief Chat after dark. And then we can invite Alex back and we can talk about all this stuff. Heck yeah, I'll be I'll be your Kevin Eubanks. I'll just sit there with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. I'll see you at midnight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh I know people what people always are like, man, I'm funny. I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. Uh and, and I know it's probably like the freaking scariest thing in the world. So can you kind of take us through your your first like open mic night or the first time that can, you got got on stage or uh, yeah, I so you know, being a fan of comedy, I knew for sure that, you know, comedians would do more than one show a night. You know, sometimes they would do two, three shows, sometimes at the same venue. If you're lucky enough to perform in New York, you know, you could do what we call spots, you know, three, four spots a night. And so in my first foray into performing live stand up comedy, I did two open mics in the same day. I went to the 530 uh, p.m. open mic. Uh, at the River Center Comedy Club in downtown San Antonio, uh, which is no longer with us. Um, mm. So RIP, pour, uh, you know, pour one out for the River Center Comedy Club. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I did an open mic there. And I literally, like, I was kind of shy. Believe it or not, I was shy. And I was just kind of like reading my, my jokes off an of index card. And my dad, just being so darling, you know, he's holding the, the camcorder recording me and I, I would read a joke and then look up and then read another joke and look up for the reaction and then uh at nine o'clock i drove up to austin so about an hour and a half away uh and did another open mic and did okay uh but like the the comics in austin were not as supportive and uh, ever since then i've always had like my bone to pick with them i mean i'm friends with austin comics now but i'm still like nah man I remember, man. I remember, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you know, I, I, it wasn't my, you know, I got a couple laughs, and I think there's still like one or two jokes from that original set. I'll still do, you know, almost twelve years later. Um, but it's it's kind of crazy how all that kind of like rolled into, you know, now the thing that I used to get in trouble for in school of cracking jokes and saying inappropriate things. And, you know, making kids laugh 
now it's it's taken me all over the world i got to perform in you know canada all over the country and uh you know led me to vegas and uh, for a while i had my own vegas show and you know all that from just the stuff i used to get in trouble for in school so kids if you're out there and you're listening to this uh thank you for not playing Fortnite. also kids <laughs> follow me on twitch uh <laughs> And then three, uh, you know, if you need a new router, just lie to your parents. Uh, <laughs> inside joke between me and the chief. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, for anybody out there that thinks they're funny, you probably are. But it, 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 there's a lot of work involved that a lot of people don't think. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I could, Kevin Hart talks about his day. I'm going to go to an open mic and talk about my day. And it's like, no, uh, Kevin Hart did comedy for 25 years and he has yeah. those muscles and his mind can take something and, you know, make jokes out of that and in a pace and a flow and everything where it just looks spontaneous. Uh, but everything's so honed and crafted and well put together that, it, you know, it's incredible. Although like Kevin, I haven't seen his new special. I hear good things. Um, but for, for where I'm at, sometimes I watch some of the, the bigger name celebrity comics and it's like, Oh, cool. You're name dropping a lot. And I'm like, all right, their life is cool. <laughs> you know, but I can't relate because you hang out with Snoop Dogg every, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the you have the rock on speed dial. Oh, yeah, man. I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, we, we know what that's like. We know what that's like here too, because we just had the rock on the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> name dropper. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it just you know it, he doesn't answer our calls anymore, but uh we we did have <laughs> I've seen his Instagram. I think I'm, he's busy. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, we're, we're just cute. <laughs> so, oh, and and uh, speaking of the Rock and wrestling, uh, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and I didn't uh, I didn't notice how much wrestling had an influence on my performing. You know, on my kind of stage persona, because you know when I when I first did comedy, I kind of hid behind my nickname of Kool Aid. I'm like all right, I'm Kool-Aid. And now, you know, and then for a while it was Alex Kool-Aid Ansel. And now it's just kind of Alex Ansel. I still get called Kool-Aid, but it's still everyone. It's still cool. Every once in a while I'll get recognized and like, Hey, Alex. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. You know, usually yeah, yeah. Kool-Aid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's definitely been a big impact on my life too, because of that's what brought me out to Vegas was I was performing and opening uh, for a retired wrestler called Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh yeah, I know Jake the Snake. Oh, yeah, and I, uh, I think, I in my background, I, I had it on Sergeant Slaughter, right? Oh wait, here we go. <laughs> but then I switched. But yeah, Jake the Snake is right there. So another Texan. So I got to uh, tour. You know, he's the one that took me across the country, and I would, I would do my like stand-up comedy stuff in the beginning of the show, and then he would kind of uh, do a storytelling stuff. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great one two combo, and uh, it was it was insane to like work with somebody that I grew up watching on TV. Absolutely, you know? I think the yeah, Undertaker I didn't the Undertaker just retire or something like that for oh. the forty seventh time. Yeah, just like Scary's <laughs> comeback tour. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> yeah he retired. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, he retired so they could sell those thirtieth anniversary T shirts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so um, he's known as the dead man because he never stays dead you know so <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. well, you mentioned um that you're in las vegas so where mm -hmm. are you usually performing when we're not in a pandemic and then what are the, the some of your highlights like some of your favorite places that you've performed oh oh awesome that's a great question uh vegas has really taken me in i love vegas uh and a vegas to me uh is a big dumb cartoon city and i think you found out just from interacting <laughs> with me i'm a big dumb cartoon of a person so it was like ah perfect match uh right now my home club is the la comedy club located inside the strat used to be called the stratosphere but now it's called the strat get with it oh, people oh really oh, um, okay didn't know, yeah. didn't know that the strat so now it's okay. called it's it's been rebranded and everything's fancier you know and uh, <laughs> all modern and sleek and <laughs> um so that's my that's like my home base right there but i also work at a couple other different clubs in vegas uh i got to headline a show at the jimmy kimmel comedy club uh oh, that's oh. kind of like right there on the strip uh, at the uh link 
uh, hotel and casino or casino, I should say. Um, so that, that club was phenomenal, gorgeous venue. And that was pretty cool to perform on stage and, you know, have like Jimmy Kimmel's name behind you and, uh, definitely got some good footage out of there that I need to release. So, um, where else have I performed? I performed at the, the laugh factory at the Tropicana. Uh, I haven't gotten into Brad Garrett's yet, but I'm working on that. Uh, that's probably the next one at MGM that I'm working on. And then a couple of like independent rooms and other casinos. And then actually for a short while, I had my own one man show at Treasure Island called Squeezed, uh, the story or Squeezed, uh, the story of losing or the funny side of losing weight. There, I should know the name of my own damn show, right? <laughs> uh, so it was a one man show, but it was like comedy. And it was about, you know, how I, you know, growing up as a fat kid and then losing weight when I worked with Jake the Snake and, um, you know, working out with him and uh, kind of getting some of the weight weight back. And uh, it, it was a unique experience because I had, Again, it was like kind of a one-man show, but then the, we had these uh, uh, two dancers that would do like dance numbers. Like I, I, they had me singing and dancing at the beginning of the show, and <laughs> and I just go, why? Like I'm a comedian. Just let me tell you. And they're like, it's Vegas. We gotta have showgirls. And I'm like, <laughs> and it, and legit. This, and this producer guy has like produced all kinds of like hit shows, but you know, it, it, I'm like. Hey man, it's not, you know, we're not on the set of casino anymore. You know, it's not like the eighties where, you know, Hey, oh, no. and I'm like, how about we get some screens and we do some interactive stuff. And then nah, no, nobody wants that. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, but I, it was a great experience. It was super fun of, of doing an hour of comedy a night and then doing, uh, you know, <laughs> choreographed dance routines. <laughs> and, uh, and that was pretty cool to, to kind of like oh look i uh you know the the boy from san antonio the pride of the deuce time of the countdown city shout out to all my spurs fans um you know has has a show there in vegas and what kind of made it full circle was when i first started doing comedy i was working retail uh, i was kind of doing some freelance you know working for vendor reps with my dad here and there on base uh and then i got into working for circuit city rest in peace uh so i uh i would do a lot of these open mics on off nights at mexican restaurants uh in san antonio because it's san antonio uh and then when i had my show at treasure island it was inside senior frogs a mexican restaurant you know so <laughs> i was like i started started from the bottom at these open mics and you know mexican restaurants and then i have my own show on the vegas strip inside a mexican restaurant <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you no matter how far you get you can't you know your your past will haunt you <laughs> so and then i think to me it has you have to be so much funnier because you need people to laugh their loudest to overcome the sound of crunching chips oh you yeah. know so i think it's like a, a good you know <laughs> skill to have it makes you work harder to get those like rah, laughs so you oh don't hear kang, kang, kang. so so serious <laughs> that was a delayed reaction julie uh, it was i just had that was a, was a very a drink uh, there a satellite uh -huh, it was. <laughs> so uh, alex can you share with us um you you talked about you know having to come up with jokes that would be louder than the chip eating so how yeah. how do you come up with new material what's that process like i hey it's weird man i you know it's it's one of these like i guess artist stereotypes at least for me there'll be some months where i'm like i can't put the pen down and everything i you know okay this is great inspiration here this and that uh and then there's you know other times where i go three weeks and i'm like am i still funny oh my god what's going on with me uh, uh, you know is this even funny what am i doing here and then there's other times where i, I the only way i could describe it is called uh, i guess like tripping the rift because it's almost like you're on stage and you feel that almost like performing energy and sometimes it's just from reading the crowd and the vibes and um because you have to read people constantly you're reading a whole room of people and that's where my my salesman stuff that I learned coming up, you know, with my dad being a sales manager, that helped me a lot in comedy of how to read people and, um, and do all that. But uh, 
you know, I just from from everyday life stuff that happens in the news, I try not to go too topical uh, because that has a short shelf life. Uh, but just, you know, life experiences, stuff that I'm going through. And then I do jokes that I think are funny, you know, so there's, you know, some things out there that might uh, tick off certain, you know, sides or certain people with their sensitivities, I guess I'll put it nicely. But I'm like, whatever, I'm doing jokes. I'm trying to make people laugh. If you want to, you know, just break it apart and they oh, you're, you're marginalizing this group and that group. And I'm like, I'm marginalized. All right. I'm, you know, <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> comedy comes from the outside, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, from Jewish writers and then great black standups, it, it, great comedy comes from the outside. And I've been an outsider, you know, from being my size and then, um, you know, having a, you know, immigrant mother, you know, and then later on my dad coming out, you know, so I have all these perspectives uh, that I can add to that. And, um, you know, and then, you know, what do we do as outsiders? We make people laugh so we can, you know, fool them into letting us in, you know? Uh, so I think that answered your question, right? Yeah. So just life, like stuff happens to me. I do jokes about it. So for example, you know, like, uh, my dad came out late in life at 64, you know, and then, uh, kind of, you know, that was a shock to me, you know, but then, you know, kind of look back and go, oh yeah, all right. You know, uh, so that would come up in my act. I would talk about that. And then at, <laughs> at the ripe old age of 34, a couple of years ago, I, uh, <laughs> finally lost my V card. And so that, you know, that's in the act, Yeah. you know, <laughs> so just stuff that happens to me, you know? Yeah. And just try to share that story. Cause I feel like when, if I pull from myself, and talk about myself and my experiences and everything, then those jokes are harder to steal, you know? Cause then sure. if you see a comic do, Oh, I got a gay dad and blah, 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 joke, joke, joke. And it's like, yo, that's Kool-Aid stuff. Why is he, yeah. you know, why is he doing his stuff? So that's why I kind of uh, go for that. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, jokes, you know, I'm not out there singing. Impressions are cool. If, if you're, you know, <laughs> I'm getting so like, all right, listen here, guitar comics. I got another thing. No, I don't care. Uh, so, you know, if you've been doing it as long as I have, you get kind of jaded. But at the end of the day, funny is funny. And uh, and I love hanging out at comedy shows and laughing. And uh, hanging out with comics is a great way to come up with stuff, too. Um, but, yeah, just, uh, you know, that's how, I, that's how I come up with the jokes. It's just living life, you know, and, and, know it, and saying yes to a lot of experiences. You know, because there, there's been, especially over this summer, man, of like, hey, you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't. And I got so sick of it that uh, I was offered to do a show. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I haven't, I haven't basically haven't left the house other than the grocery store or something else. Uh, you know, I went to, um, uh, to do a bar show. And I was trying my best to stay socially distant, wearing a mask. But uh, I don't know. Have you heard of this great stuff called alcohol? Um, <laughs> I had some of this. And I guess it lowers your inhibitions and affects your judgment or something. I don't know. It's new to me. And uh, <laughs> so I ended up <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing five minutes because there's 10 other comics there uh, in this like kind of country bar on the outskirts of um, – uh, Boulder City near uh, Henderson, you know, Las Vegas adjacent. And then two or three hours later, I'm on a on a yacht, you know, and I think oh, I did gosh. like I did like six months of <laughs> kind of partying, I guess, or like hanging <laughs> out in one night. And of course, I ended up in the water, you know, like I didn't even I ended up in the water before I got on the boat. You know what I mean? Oh, and because uh, oh. they're like, Kool-Aid, you're a big guy. We're not going to make you walk on the docks to get all the way to the boat. We're going to have this guy, uh, <laughs> I think his name was Wayne, you know, had the, the blue collar shirt and the knee brace and the ponytail. And I was like, this guy's my people. And uh, he took me on. <laughs> I was like, whenever you get a guy in his 50s with a ponytail, you're like, all right, this guy's seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he <legit. laughs> so, maybe it was Doug. I don't know. It was like, you yeah. know, uh, one syllable. It was one of those names. And so uh, he takes me around on the dinghy, right? Not a dinghy, but, uh, and I'm on in Instagram just being like, living light. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, there's no lights. It's completely dark out here. All right. Uh, so from that <laughs> boat, I try to get on the dock. And me, uh, I don't know if you, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so used to hanging out with, you know, rock stars and being on yachts and stuff. No, I'm an idiot. 
So I get one foot on the dock. And as I'm trying to, you know, reach up, I push the boat away because somebody, uh, you know, I guess not a lot of Navy experience on a Coast Guard didn't think to tie up the boat, you know, with me being a novice. And uh, so I do a split basically <gasps> and then end in the water. And uh, yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, oh my uh, I'm gosh. like emptying my pockets. Like, okay, brand new iPhone, put it on there, you know? And th thank goodness the iPhones are like water resistant at least. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I was, uh, what else did I have on there? Oh yeah. My Gerber knife. And then, my wallet and i'm like my <laughs> i have a <laughs> frequent customer card where they stamp it at a chicken place out here card was still safe so I was like, <laughs> oh thank goodness <laughs> um, I, still, I still i redeemed it but i was like you have to hear the tale of this yeah. <laughs> um so i was in the water for a good like 45 minutes because uh they were trying to pull me up and i was like no nah, dude i'm pushing five bills you can't pull this up like find me a ladder you <laughs> You know, so eventually they uh they tugboated me they threw me some rope and they threw me a lifesaver and uh <laughs> and they tugboated me around and I was, the wake was hitting me and i was like rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and I, that kind of helped oh me sober gosh. up a little bit because i was getting some water uh <laughs> so, <laughs> and then uh, i finally you know you know get on the ladder get out and they bring me onto the yacht and uh to cheers and applause and then uh yeah. And then after that day, I was just, you know, sore, messed up. And I was like, that's why we don't do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, you got to pull that rubber band just to let it snap to remind you what it does. And uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah I, I don't, I don't know if I could have partied after I've been floating around in the, in the water for, for a couple of hours. I, I think that would have, I would have called it a night. Don't sell yourself short, man. Yeah. Never yeah. say, yeah, I never say never. I know that's what you want to say. <laughs> you know, but I'm sure, you know, right out of boot, you were right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah we, we, we would have to have another show for that as well after, after dark. <laughs> there you go. In the, <laughs> so, can, can you tell us like the toughest part of your job? And, and, and I'm sure the most rewarding is probably, you know, just making people laugh. But uh, yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, uh, the, <laughs> the ladies that are like, oh my God, you're so funny. Let's hang out. I'm like, oh my God, that worked. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, oh yeah, be charming and confident. Be like you are on stage. <sighs> hey, what's, what's up, babe? Uh, <sighs> you know, um, now some of the challenges I, it's weird because, um, one of the things I kind of like tell people about it's almost like when you tell somebody a story of uh almost like war story if you will for lack of a better term where you just like light a cigarette and go you know what my job's like you ever been to a podunk town population of ten thousand? and you get orders to go to this bar 300 people there and you got to entertain them for an hour and you don't know a soul in there that's what my job is and I, you know, to a lot of people that are like, oh my God, going to a place you've never been before and then having to entertain people. And they're like, uh, 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 and to me, I'm like, let's do it. Like, put me in coach. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll seal team six, that stuff, you know, like <laughs> drop me in. I'm like, yo, they need to laugh. They need to laugh. Yo, I got you. Bah, 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 well, bah, hey, we'll bring you, you know? in through the water though. We'll bring you in. We'll infiltrate yeah, you really? in. Oh yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put me in those recruiting commercials bah, 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 with the horns playing bah, 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 and then in the wake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just all these vests on me just patched together. Uh, <laughs> so that, um, you know, and, and the thing for me, like growing up, I always loved traveling. I always loved meeting new people. That's what made me a great salesman, you know? So like doing stand-up comedy is like the natural evolution of that. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's one of the things I like to do is, is doing the travel and sure. Sometimes it sucks, you know, being stuck in a car eight, nine hours or, you know, flying across the country, uh, doing stuff like that um, or doing these tours. And, you know, of course <laughs> I'm like complaining about stand up traveling to people in the military. I just realized how crappy that's. <laughs> hey, thanks for letting me tell jokes. No, uh, <laughs> they're like, you know what? Sometimes, I mean, I have to hold my bladder for a while and it's tough. No, uh, <laughs> no, but, um, 
yeah the so some of the challenges are just like okay are we gonna get stabbed tonight let's be so funny that they forget to shoot us you know yeah. uh but that hasn't <laughs> you know that hasn't been in too many places usually the smaller towns and the smaller places are the most appreciative they're the ones man i can't believe you came down here to tell us these jokes mister you must be a rock star or something <laughs> like nah but i have been to a dentist you know and they're like whoa <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> you must be a millionaire <laughs> and, well actually no. um, <laughs> and then the rewarding part is uh you know yeah making the people laugh meeting new people and then um sometimes there there's some um one-on-one -on -one interactions and and it's just like First of all, as, as someone who's been a virgin till 34 and then never got looked at twice and, you know, middle school, high school and all that stuff of like, I'm getting this kind of attention. Whoa. Okay. All right. You know, so still kind of getting used to some of that. But then, you know, with the pandemic and everything, you're like, come on, let me tell jokes again. Oh. <laughs> 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 so you're pretty pretty funny guy you've you've kept us laughing this morning um what what comedian do you look up to the most like who's your idol um let's see i'm trying to think uh i'm trying to think of really tall ones kevin nealon is super <laughs> tall george wallace is super tall uh, oh my gosh <laughs> wow, literally. yeah um i'll tell you some of my favorite comedians uh of to me, I mean, you know, every comic is either, I th if you ask them, hey, are you a Carlin guy or are you a Pryor guy? And me, I'm, you know, I don't want to do cop out. Well, they're both great, you know. Uh, but I'm uh, a Carlin guy just because of the way he played with language. And I've always been fascinated by language because I grew up, you know, speaking both German and English and then picking up some Spanish, of course, grown in South Texas. Um, you know, so language has always fascinated me. And the way like Carlin would look at of uh, marketing terms and, and, you know, some of the establishment, anti-establishment kind of, you know, notions and things like that. Uh, but like current comedians that I, that I like right now, Bill Burr is amazing. Uh, check him out. Uh, Joe List is one of my favorites. Mark Norman. Um, there's a, a show on Sirius XM satellite radio called The Bonfire. Two super funny comedians uh, run that one. Dan Soder and big J Okerson. And, but I mean, right now the guy who's killing it on all fronts, Dave Chappelle, you know, uh, just anything he, and I love how he doesn't have social media. He says what he says. He doesn't care what groups come out or get upset. Cause at the end of the day, it's funny. It's fu like it, you know, I don't do jokes cause I want somebody to feel bad. I do jokes cause I want, you know, people to share my sense of humor and make them laugh. You know, that's, that's why I do it. I would never, you know, use my, my humor to intentionally uh, do that. Unless it was a roast battle, then obviously, yeah, let's go for it. But even then it's to make them laugh, you know? Um, so th those are definitely some of my favorites, but like right now, just, I mean, Chappelle's amazing, you know, uh, Hannibal Burris is another one of my favorites. Um, i trying to, let's see who else. Uh, Jackie Cation is amazing too. Uh, Lori Kilmartin, great uh, comedian there's so many out there so if, if they want to people want to tweet at me to 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 you know uh on who to watch then i'll definitely give them a list and and luckily um one of my kind of like freelance gigs that i do in between comedy is i do like graphic design and photography and video editing and so i was just at a comedy competition slash festival here in vegas and they put me in a separate room so i could uh, do portraits and take photos of all the comedians and I got to see some great upcoming talent uh, through that. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, comedy is something you, I don't think a lot of people realize that you need it until, you know, it's not there. Yeah. Um, are we essential? Uh, you know, that could be argued. I There's people that are like, I'm an artist. Treat me as such. And it's like, yo, man, I, I just go and tell jokes. You know, like I, <laughs> like I, <laughs> you know <laughs> post, you know apocalypse happens what use am i it's like uh <laughs> you know do i have any other skills and it's like i uh, you know yeah. i could waste stuff that i could float uh we figured that out <laughs> uh, <laughs> so but uh yeah yeah there we go 
<laughs> I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? <laughs> I need more coffee. Well, Alex, yeah. thanks so much for making us laugh today. Um, just want to pause for a second to share mm -hmm. some feedback from the live feed. Oh, yeah, for sure. Are, people are tuning in from all over. Um, Daryl is in Raleigh, North Carolina. He says this guy is funny. Marie Kenimer, she must be really digging you because she sent uh, probably about 15 emojis uh, or 20 and it's Santa and kisses and Santa and kisses over and over again. So, <laughs> so Marie is really kind of digging you, I think. I think she's making me blush like Rudolph's uh, red nose. <laughs> Margaret also says, you all are handsome in your own way. <laughs> Every pot's got a lid. God don't make no mistakes. I'm like, all right, thank you. <laughs> and Love. then I think, I think you have <laughs> maybe an old, an old roommate who is on here. Who oh, says, no. Do you know um, what his name would be? Because I don't want to know. I don't want to say it, but Mr. McGinnis. Oh, yeah, uh, that's his online name. That's uh, I'll put him on blast. Derek, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> actually, I lived with uh, two. Uh, one was in the um, uh, Army Reserves, and then uh, my buddy Derek was uh, was in the Army, was deployed, and all that stuff. And so I, I knew he'd be on this. <laughs> so did he well, put lots of inappropriate comments about uh, farting? <laughs> no, he did not. Oh, but he says he says Kool Aid looks adorable. Oh shucks! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're lots of love for Kool Aid he, today. Yeah. He he behaved himself. Thank you, Derek. Uh, and I'm sure he appreciates the the shout out. So. <laughs> and then, oh sorry. Oh no, you go ahead. No, 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 you go. It's all you. Um, Tanya says he's spot on about the work. I'm a veteran who's also a comedian. I'm not currently performing due to the pandemic, but can't wait to hit the stage again. Yeah, yeah. And then Chris yeah. Ward from Dallas, he's on that room there. <laughs> what do you say? He says there's a lot going on in the room. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. No, this is part of my whole like Twitch uh, setup and background too, so uh, people can kind of like see little Easter eggs. You know, you see some like uh, Spurs stuff because I'm a huge Spurs fan. Like video game stuff, Star Wars stuff, and then Ninja Turtles always been a, a big part of uh, my, my fandom, so to speak. Um, but, um, you know, I, I definitely love performing for, for military folks. And I, it was weird. I, I mentioned earlier, I did that show for veterans and I have this, this bit uh, that's like, -ha -ha, you know, pretty, pretty rough. And the headliner that I was working with, he goes, yeah, don't do that bit. You know, you got to, you know, be clean. This is, this is for the military. This is their wives are here. And I was like, yo, I know military people. They, I'm going to go hard. Like, I'm going to go, <laughs> like, you, you know, yeah. they do not care. And he's like, no, nah, I think it's a mistake. So I didn't listen to him. I went up there and I did this bit and there's video of it. And, you know, it crushed. They were, because it's a very patriotic, it's an engineered bit for that crowd to be honest yeah and so they're chanting usa usa you know and it's a room full of veterans and i'm just like all right guys calm down i i have to leave the stage soon you know and then kind of which is like kind of an ego stroke of like <laughs> yes i know i'm great <laughs> <laughs> um and then the comic who told me not to do that went up after me and he didn't do so well and then he he went up to me and he goes i was wrong you were right. And I was like, yeah, thank you. That, you know, cause this guy's like 25 year headliner and for him to kind of like acknowledge, you know, to be that humble, I was like, okay, I wasn't going to like rake him over the coals about it or anything, or just be like, hmm. oh, yeah. it's like, it's not my first rodeo, bro. I've, you know, performed in front of the troops. And I think one of the most like strongest experiences that I have, not only dealing with my own like body issues and physical issues was for a lot of the work I did with AFES uh, in the power zone would be at Fort Sam right next to Bamsey burn center. Right. And I would, I'd be 19, 20, 21 years old working there. And I would literally see dudes, you know, men and women, my age burns all over their body. And after a while you get desensitized to it. You don't even notice it anymore. 
Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, okay, just another customer. And then uh, and a lot of these cats would, uh, you know, I would tell them, oh, uh, later on, um, when I was still working at Circuit City and still doing some like the freelance vendor stuff, uh, one guy in particular, I think his name was like uh, Rick Yaroche. I think that was his name. And uh, his brother, so Rick was burned. And then uh, his brother worked at Circuit City with me. And they would say, oh, this guy, Alex, he's super funny. Uh, he does comedy, blah, blah, blah. And so he comes up to me and he's like, oh, hey, what's up? And, you know, to some people, they're, oh, I did, you know, me, I just, like I said, I'm desensitized, don't even see it anymore. And he goes, oh, man, you're a comedian. Oh, make fun of me. Roast me, roast me. And just without missing a beat, I was like, I think someone beat me to it, you know? <laughs> and then, wow. and like the manager's Uh-oh. like, oh, and then he's cracking up and laughing and I'm like, all right, you know, so we just kind of go back and forth a little bit, do some of these jokes and they're just like, Ugh! but it's like, that's what they want. They would just want to be treated normal. And, and I could kind of relate to that at, at a, at that level because, you know, they're, they're burned all over their body. I'm big as hell. You know, I know what it's like to get stared at by kids in the grocery store, you know, just for standing there. So like on, on that level, I kind of get that. And then, um, and I couldn't, you know, without giving shout outs to uh, Bobby Henline, I'm sure you guys know him. And uh, we kind of came up in uh, the San Antonio scene together a little bit. And he's a veteran that's been burned and doing comedy. And he's been able to, uh, you know, uh, get on TV shows and all kinds of stuff for that. So shout out to Bobby Henline out there. We did some fun shows together. So absolutely. And, vet- yeah. and vet- veterans are, and like, you know, you're, you, you were roommates with, with two veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're human too. So we just, yeah. You know, we, we, just like, we just like to laugh and we like to. We, and we, some we, of y'all have some dark, messed up senses of humor. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, you're going to try to. Oh, no. Hold on, buddy. And then so what are the things I uh, maybe you guys can help me out with this. Uh, hopefully when I get back to San Antonio is maybe going to uh, uh, some of the hospitals and some of those places and, and just like, oh, the CA, uh, the CO ain't looking. All right. Let's crack some real jokes. You know, let's. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's uh, do that. So I've, I've always been uh, wanting to do that and open to totally doing that. So because everybody should laugh and deserves a laugh. And, uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine what that's like of, uh, <clears throat> you know, of having to, one go through that traumatic experience and then everybody kind of, uh, you know, treating you with kid gloves. And then, you know, all you want to do is be treated normal. You know, I think everybody can relate to that. So, absolutely, yeah. So Alex, you got all poignant. Oh my god! Oh, I know. <laughs> Trying to hit us in the field, emotions, Alex. people. <laughs> well, before, but we really enjoyed having you here with us today. And before we wrap up, what can we remind us where viewers can go to keep up with you? I know you mentioned Y2 Kool Aid and yep. AlexAnsel.com. Like, so where can we find you? There we go. Hold up one of my stickers right there. Man, child, human, comedian. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> this AlexAnsel.com or why to kool-aid right on there all right so that's all my social media um twitter instagram you know uh if you love this pg family friendly version of me then probably stick with me on facebook if you want to uh and then instagram probably too and then uh if if you appreciate some of the the <laughs> the other stuff definitely twitter that's kind of where i put my more risque and and politically incorrect if you will uh kind of stuff and then twitch is just that's that's my playground that's where i go and have fun and again that's like me playing you know video games interacting with the audience and like last friday uh i I don't do black friday anymore i do blackout friday right and uh, (laughs) i have my own (laughs) yeah i had my own uh baby yoda theories and so i was going through that and i don't know if you guys could tell in this uh i call it the fortress of magnitude uh, so, <laughs> uh, but I'm a huge nerd, so you know, talk about all kinds of nerdy stuff, and then uh, you know, just try to be funny on there. I talk pro wrestling and nerd stuff, comic books, video games, Marvel movies, and everything. And you know, people try to get political, and I just you know make fun of that stuff too. So you know, I just I just want people to have a good time, just laugh, and forget all the stuff going out on there, and uh, you know, get some escapism, and um, you know. Let's hang out. Let's have a good yep. time. Let's let's Absolutely. chuckle it up. Absolutely, <laughs> Alex. And so we we definitely appreciate you for uh you know bringing a smile to our faces. Not not just here, just in general in life. Because like I said, uh, you know, yeah. the, the world is full of bullcrap. A, a lot, you know, a lot <laughs> I of like bull that crap. pause. Yeah, yeah. And so 
So to the fact that you're able to, to give us some humor and some, some things to make us smile, we, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. And, pl and please know that, you know, you being on the show just means so much to us as service members. Uh, we got airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, and your, probably your favorite now, Space Force uh, personnel <laughs> <laughs> out there Man. watching you. So yeah. uh, thank you for being with us and we wish you all the best. Thank you. It was an honor and a pleasure. And uh, I was really looking forward to it and uh, love to be back at any time. You were great. So um, <laughs> wish you all the best for 2021 and hope you have Merry holidays. Yes. Thank you. You too. And, and if you can <laughs> hang on for a second uh, after the live feed, I got to get some information from you. Let's do it. Thank you, guys. Cheap Thanks for watching. Out. Bye. Bye.